welcome back to the GT Skill Modeling channel. Obviously, first video in a little while, um, possibly nearly a, nearly a year maybe since I finished off the Type 74 from Tamiya. Um, so, I haven't been idle in that time. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, it's because of this and this and this. I have been doing stuff. Uh, it's just that when it comes around to filming videos and that side of things, I still like the idea of being able to do full build videos but I just still can't quite get my sort of head round how to actually go about doing that in a way that is uh, then makes a, a video that's kind of enjoyable to watch. So as a result I have been modelling. Uh, I do find that I'm getting more time which is good uh, than I was before and I just haven't got around to sharing any of it. I've been sharing um, pictures of finished videos and updates. Uh, I've been trying to use my Instagram a bit more. So if you do want to go and follow me over there, it's uh, at GT Scale Modeling, same handle as the YouTube channel here. And I'd appreciate a follow over there. Uh, the advantage for you guys, I guess, is that you don't need to sit and listen to me waffling nonsense. But you can still keep up with what I'm what I'm working on. So I wanted to just do, I'll try and keep it quick, but a relative sort of just an update what I have been doing, uh, a couple of finished things since that t Type 74, uh, and what's on the bench just now. Um, so let's get into that. So what you can see in front of you are two kits I've finished in the last period of time, not exactly sure when, I can't, can't call exactly. Um, the first one we have here is the um, Gaz Tiger uh, from Meng. Uh, this is the Meng version. I think the Zvezda do one as well. This is the Meng kit. What I'll do is I'll stick some pictures of these up at the end so you can get a better a better idea. The lighting's not great here. So uh, this is a relatively quick build actually. Uh, it didn't take overly long. I wasn't. I was kind of a bit dithering about doing it and publicizing it a little bit just with what's going on in Ukraine and things just now. Didn't want to sort of intentionally, <laughs> intentionally give anybody the impression I was somehow glorifying or on the side of the Russians because that's quite clearly not the case. But it was in the stash, um, and in the end, it's a model of a vehicle. It doesn't represent any sort of, you know, other other anything. But it's nothing more than that. Um, it's quite an interesting looking vehicle. It's quite it was quite a nice kit to put together. Um, quite pleased with how the weathering and things came out on that. So that's one kit. The other one then is the uh, 155mm AUF1 turret on a T72 chassis. Uh, this is a, a Hobby Boss kit. Bit of a what if vehicle, well not a what if vehicle, it was a prototype vehicle that was put together I believe by, possibly by GCT, the company behind the AUF1 turret, as a means to, I believe, attempt to try and sell the uh, the Egyptians. Um, uh, a self-propelled howitzer is that is my understanding. Something along those lines. It was a prototype cobbled together of a, a, a Western, if you like, um, self-propelled howitzer turret and autoloader system, ammunition storage in the back of the turret as well, onto a, a chassis that would be more familiar with a sort of North African or Middle Eastern um, country. I don't believe it ever got any orders, um, hence the sort of it's a sort of what if prototype. Uh, did it just kept it clean, uh, sand coloured, just all over, a uh, nice clean build, uh, no real weathering because as I said it was a prototype show sort of demo vehicle so wouldn't have really ever gotten any kind of real weathering on it so it would have been a bit strange to weather that up I think. Also again it was a quick build, get it out of the stash, get it built and get it done, you know get that kind of Sort of satisfaction of at least completing something. So that's the that's the completed builds. Let me try and find some space. Uh, okay, so what are we working on just now? So one thing we're working on is this guy here. So Tamiya's Classic Panzer II kit. People have probably seen this kit umpteen million times. Nice little kit. It's cheap. It's 
goes together well. Uh, yeah, for sticking on dioramas and stuff, I think it's the perfect kind of little kit. Um, painted up as a sort of earlier war North Africa scheme, so the desert, the, the German grey underneath, because a lot of them came from Europe and were then just sprayed or otherwise painted up with a, a sand colour in in theatre. Um, this wore off quite easily, my understanding is, that the, for these smaller earlier tanks, and this was before tanks were being painted in the dark yellow from the from the factory so it gives you the opportunity to do this kind of nice worn worn look this was done with some hairspray chipping so the tank's pretty much done um he's there and we've got a, <coughs> excuse me a scratch built diorama base just a couple of bits of foam a little bit of fall away here with some um i, I need to overspray these stones still they just stand out too much i just want some texture there the actual groundwork's kind of done Texture with ammo or AK ground texture, I can't remember which one it is, and then painted with various sort of sand tones and then various pigments and things over the top to give a hopefully a relatively sandy kind of look. Some bits of kind of light coloured static grass tuss stuck around here just to give a little bit of visual interest, um, and as if there's a, a build up of sort of rocky debris here at the side of this sort of slight more road, if you like. It's not really a road, but I need to spray over those because they're, uh, they're absolutely the wrong sort of colour just now. And then once that's done, actually, the base will be pretty much done. The building was scratch built, so it's made from some uh, foam sections, cardboard for the roof, and then it's all, again, textured with the same stuff as the ground material to give that kind of stucco, um, kind of mud, mud wall kind of look. A couple of simple windows. And uh, a door just made from coffee stars and some, some roof beams sticking out made from matchsticks, I think. Um, and then just painted up. Um, pretty simple, but for me, quite an advanced sort of thing to have to do. I've never never done anything like that before, so I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I think it looks suitably North African and simple. And will fit the scene really, it fits the scene really, makes a nice little scene, I think. It's not going to be anything more complex than the tank set here. And I have master boxes. There's a master box figure set, which actually I think is designed for this kit with um, uh, a couple of the the crews if they're out on the back deck. And I think maybe maybe again the turret or something. I'm not entirely sure. Three figures I think, and then you get a, a local on a donkey. Um, originally I had planned to have the local on the donkey leading a shared of, herd of sheep, uh, but I've now figured that the diorama's not <laughs> the picture frame I ended up getting for the base is actually not quite built to put the building on it. It's not actually built. It. <laughs> Not really big enough, so uh, I mean, I guess I could have the sheep all sort of swarming around the tank, but I think it would just look really crowded. So uh, we'll stick with just the tank crew figures, and I think that all uh, just be a nice little scene. Tanks just stopped for a for a little rest. Crew just hopped out for a little rest, um, and yeah, just a nice wee dis nice wee quick way to display that tank. So that's that, and the last but not least, you'll be glad to hear. Is be careful this one because the varnish is still drying. It's upside down clearly, and there's a big hair. Oh no, no, it's run. There's some varnish runs on here, so I have to sort those. So this is the Hobby Boss, the new Hobby Boss FA eighteen F in one one forty eight scale. Clearly, we're on the home stretch now. Thankfully. Uh, I've just been putting the flat coat onto the onto the main fu fuselage here, ready for some oil weathering. Um, these Hornets are not exactly the cleanest of, of aircraft, so although this is the Cagbird for the uh, for 103, the Jolly Rogers or the new the current Jolly Rogers, um, they yeah they're still prone to the same leaks and whatever else. So be looking at my references uh, shortly for finding the most appropriate places for some oil staining and uh, fuel leaks and, and such. Uh, all the other bits are done, so literally this is the last stages. The uh, tail fins are here marked up with the Jolly Rogers. I know it's a fairly standard thing, Jolly Rogers these days, but I've never built one, so. Um, the new scheme as well is actually white and black rather than the the stripe down here is white and black rather than the yellow and black previous squadrons. I didn't realise that 
the Jolly Rogers name has been attributed to several different squadrons at times, not the same squadron all the time, so that was news to me. Uh, there is a black drop tank for the centre as part of the scheme, and then there's two two standard grey drop tanks. So there's that loadout. We've got the tail planes are all here. And going for the folded wing tips on this one, I've done a, a Super Hornet before, a single seat. Um, it was the Ravel kit, so they had no tail, uh, wing fold option and things. So since this kit has the wing fold option, I thought, why not? So it'll have the folded wings on it, which will mean it takes up a little bit less room on the shelf. And then we've got all the various pylons here. A couple of uh, laser guided bombs. Couple of M one twenties already on the pylons. The pylons for the drop tanks, and then the targeting pod is still got to go on. And then the ejection seats are here, all ready to go. So that's all ready to go. Once the weathering, all over over the other side here, I've got all the gear bay doors and such. So everything's painted. Everything is now varnished, everything's had a pin wash. We are now just on to the final bit of oil weathering and then final assembly. And this one will be done. So hopefully in the next kind of couple of days even, this one will get done. I'm off all week, so hopefully get this one done. And then once those figures arrive for that um, Panzer II diorama, then that will be done as well. So some good progress, I think, in the last kind of little while on the verge of four kits being finished. Um, so not too bad at all. So thank you very much for listening, for still being a subscriber, for still watching. Uh, um, I, will tr I will try to potentially put some more updates out. I, I would love to do full build videos, but um, unfortunately it's just not, not something I'm really kind of in a position to, to do. Um, so some, some updates and things we'll have to do for now. As I said... Follow me over on Instagram uh, and my GT Skill Modeling Facebook page, um, which the will is a good way to follow as well. Um, I do I do try and post there a bit more regularly than I do on Facebook. So if you are interested in what I'm doing and kind of keeping up to date, then um, please do follow me over on those other social media channels. That's it for now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.